Welcome back to episode number 12 of The Roar, the show for all things Hershey Cubs players, coaches, personnel, and news. The first episode of 2024. I'm Clay Thomas alongside Joshua Gerhardt, your host and broadcasters for the Cubs. Back with us again today is Hershey Cubs head coach Brennan Thompson. We talked with Coach Thompson at the beginning of the year. Now we're going to get a midway checkpoint. And Coach Thompson, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me again, fellas. How are you guys? Doing Perfect. well, doing well. How was your holiday, Coach? It was uh, it was excellent. Uh, much much needed break. Got got to relax a little bit. Got to enjoy time with the family, the the daughter, her first Christmas. So it was exciting. It was it was good. I was going to ask you. Go yeah, ahead, go, go ahead. I do, I do have the same question, Clay. I was, I was going to say, yeah. well, how does it feel to be a father <laughs> exactly. for the first time around Christmas and New Year's? Yeah, it's definitely special. Um, it's not. She's at the age where she's not too excited about Christmas because she really doesn't know what it is but I'll tell you what if you get if you open up a bag and give her that wrapping paper in the bag she she loved playing with the crinkly paper so it's fun to watch <laughs> I can believe that so as we sit here the Cubs are in a great spot third in the Atlantic division with 38 points they're sitting just behind the wilkes Bridge Grand Knights who have 44 and then the junior Rangers with 50 52 so as you look at the season in the first half, what is your personal opinion as a coach and um, from a perspective of how your team has done so far? You know, I mean, you obviously have probably have a lot of good things to say, but what are some things you think they could fix on going into the second half? Yeah, I think obviously the first half of the year was was awesome. There was a lot of positives. Um, we went, we had that 12 game winning streak. We, the, the best thing is we set ourselves up. We have, we put the rest of the season and the outcome in our own hands, right? We control our destiny. We don't have to rely on other teams to win or other teams to lose. Um, set ourselves up pretty well. Uh, we definitely, with that being said, it's kind of a double-edged sword because, yeah, we won a lot of games, and, and it's tough to learn from games you win because you're winning. But in some of those games on the 12-game on the win streak, they were not always pretty wins. And I, I don't think we played to our potential, but we found ways to win, which was important. Um, but that being said, there was a lot of things that could have been better or we needed to improve, um, but it's tough to, you got to kind of flip that mindset of how can we get better? You can't get complacent. Uh, moving into the second half of the season, our, our schedule doesn't get any easier. It's a tough, tough schedule the rest of the year. And it's, it's really going to, it's going to test us and see where we're at. And I'd rather have it at the end of the year because every team should be playing some of their best hockey to really give us a benchmark of where we're at and, and prepare us for the time come playoffs, uh, the national tournament, right? That's if you want to win in those big moments, you got to know how to play and, and know what to expect. So these tough games will really set us up for that. Uh, I think to see success in the second half, we're definitely um, going to have to be a little better defensively. Um, from, from my standpoint, we gave up too many shots on a regular basis in games. Um, we have we have the goaltenders who are going to save the puck, but if we're letting up 40, 50 shots, it's, we're making their job a lot tougher. Um, so just clean up a little defensively, possess the puck a little bit more, and I would say be better on both sides, special teams. Um, we started off, penalty kill was very good beginning of the year, then it kind of teetered off, and we got back to penalty kill being good. Um, we'll just ultimately have to take less penalties. I mean, penalty kill could be clicking, but we're not going to be able to kill off seven, eight penalties a game, right? So we got to stay out of the box. Then on the flip side, power play, we got to get the get some more production out of the power play units, Let's try and get the combination of both special teams units operating above 100%. Um, we do that, we'll put ourselves in, in a position to be successful because with these good teams, our scoring chances are going to be less, right? They're good teams, they're better defensively. So we have to take advantage of our offensive opportunities and really lock down on the defensive side of the puck. We should be able to win games with three, four goals, four, um, if we can lock down defensively. And with your uh, first week back over the break, how have the boys looked? I mean, we know after the Thanksgiving break, that was only a week off. They came back and I believe won both their games coming off of that. They did very well at getting back into routine, but now it's even longer break. How have they looked in practice so far? I think the break was was very beneficial. Obviously, it's a long season. It's you get tired. You, you the break is needed. The two weeks off is definitely good. Guys come back energized, rested, and and really come back missing the game. They want to be here again, right? I mean, they should always want to be here. But it's easier when you're missing the rink. You're missing your teammates. You come back and 
you're ready to go. You're ready to get back to work, put the work boots back on. There was, we had a couple, uh, a couple guys got back a little late. A lot of our Canadians got back today was the first day back. So today was really the first day with the full team. Um, we have Michael coming back. He's flying in today from Poland. He should be cleared to go from his wrist surgery. So we'll see him the second half of the season. Uh, practice today was awesome. I mean, you wouldn't, you wouldn't have thought that they had two weeks off. There was minimal. I, I expected it to be a little rusty, a little choppy, you know, two weeks off, but they're minimal, minimal rust and the energy was there and the execution was there. It's, we had a little talk with them about you know, it, the road's not going to get any easier and we got to make sure we're pushing it every day. Um, getting better, pushing our teammates, holding ourselves accountable and just being high level individuals, right? If we can be high level individuals, then we can, take this team to be a high level team, but we can't, it's tougher to take the team to a higher level if we have to try and elevate individuals alone. But if everyone's doing their job, we can bring the team up. And today was a, a good start with everybody back. Now, now correct me if I'm wrong guys, but I believe looking at the schedule, I saw like the latter half of these games, like a lot of these games coming down the stretch of the season here are on the road. So, you know, the first half of the season was all at home in front of our own fans. So talk to us, coach, what does it take for these guys to kind of suit up for a lot of road trips the latter half of the season here and kind of string together a lot of wins? Yeah, I mean, treat it treat it like they do for home games too. Like prepare the same way. Obviously, it's a little tougher if you're on the bus and you gotta you gotta go play a game, but get on the bus. We'll get there early enough. So a lot of times hopefully we can stop at the hotel first, get get some rest and get to the rink and prepare the same way we would for a home game. It's just another game and we got to, we got to be at our best if we want to execute at a high level. Um, obviously playing at home is, is fun. You got, got our fans, but at the end of the day, you got to be able to win on, on the road and at home if, if you want to make a run at it and be a good hockey team. So yeah, a lot of games on the road, but what are you, what are you going to do about it? And not only a lot of games on the road, a lot of games against good hockey teams on the road. Yeah. So it'll, it'll definitely be testy going into the second half of the year and into playoffs. So if we can rise to that occasion, we should be okay. Because you mentioned it, just stepping up to the task at how your schedule is going to get a little tougher on this half compared to the first and just having to be on the road even more, just, you know, it makes that challenge a little bit harder. And the boys always kind of seem like they're able to step up to kind of any challenge. I mean, we've saw them come back from some decent deficits before, and this is kind of like that. You've already done so well in the previous half and now you're coming back and you have to try to step up even farther now with the fact that you have to also travel. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. And on the flip side, it's kind of, hey, the first half of the season's over. Start over 0-0. Zero, zero. We're 0-0 zero and zero again. Starting over, forget about the first half because in reality, it's over, right? We're looking at the next game, the next practice, um, and, and finding ways to get better. Even in those games we win, how could we have played better? Right. In the games we lose, it's easier to look at those and say, how could we be better? But in, in any situation, win, lose, find ways to improve and continue to elevate our game. Um, because that that will be the case when we're playing some of these these better teams on the road and it'll show us where we stand and, and where we're at. Now you talk about working on the power play a lot, you know. How were you guys able to kind of maybe implement those into the, today's practice? Did you kind of work on the umbrella, setting that up? How did that look today during practice? Honestly, today we didn't touch anything with special teams. Um, just got guys back, get their feet moving, get puck touches, get get back in the flow of things. I mean, we did implement some, some system drills and D-zone, breakouts, back checks, all that stuff. But we'll focus on special teams more so tomorrow and Friday as we get closer to the weekend. And Really, a lot of that is just film, finding clips, um, whether it's our own or, or a clip of how we want to execute something, showing the guys and maybe going through a dry run, 5 on 0, just getting the rotations, getting the feel, and then from there, adding the pressure and, and really making the reads that we need to, to to execute. And yeah, we're kind of, we'll have to do the same thing with penalty kill again, because there's two weeks off. We want to go over everything. It's kind of like a a very brief training camp here on this week leading into the into this set of games. You know, you talk about the importance of film. How how important is film to the way you guys kind of prepare and your idea of successfully stringing together wins? And how important is that back study in that film? Yeah, I mean, the film doesn't lie, right? You could think yeah. you did one thing and you see it on film and 
it's your oh yeah i didn't do that or that was bad you know well on the flip side that was really good right film's not just correcting moments it's this is a teaching moment of what it should look like um and funny you ask like i was a little late getting on this meeting because i was doing film with a player yeah. so i'm um, doing that individual film and what we did we just went through our last game and we watched we watched the clips i didn't clip anything myself um we went through it and kind of as we were watching the shifts, it was like, all right, here's the situation. What were you thinking, right? Or it was, here was the situation. This is what you did. Maybe we need to look for this next time, right? Because again, the film doesn't lie. It shows you, you did this really well, or you have a habit of consistently doing this little thing. If we can adjust that little thing, it'll take your game to the next level. Um, yeah, film is very important. And some people benefit a lot from film well, more than others, right? But again, the film, it's, it's black and white. There's no gray areas of, oh, we thought this, or maybe we saw it. And it's, it is what it is. So film's very important for both teaching moments and showing examples of, hey, this, this is good. And I like how you bring up both sides of film, because one thing is you can't always just harp on the negative because it's important to bring back the positive and like reinforce like, hey, you can do this. Now go do it more. Like we've seen you be able to do it. And I know you messed up here, but here's another example where you, you were able to make the correct pass or the right read. Correct. And looking at the film, whether it's a team film session or individuals, like showing everybody, hey, this is this was a perfectly executed forecheck or this was a perfectly executed defensive zone rotation down low, showing that so that they see it. And then when they get in that game situation, they've already seen that in their head. They can they can execute it easy. It's less thinking. It's more instinctual. You can just go. If you're always looking at the negatives, I mean, <laughs> negativity breeds negativity, right? It's just going to be down, down, down. You got to show those positives, show what it that we can do it show what it looks like and bring that positive up because if you get that confidence of hey i already did that you know you already know what to do you can execute it on the next time you know and we talk a lot of times about the tough schedule ahead right so if we look back to the first time we played cjr this season it was back i believe in new jersey during that tournament session with the hitman the hitman classic they're a tough team you know they're a tough team on the ice tough team off the ice how do you prepare to face a team like that yeah, we saw CJR. Unfortunately, we don't play them again this year, but we saw them in the beginning of the year, the like second weekend, I think, was uh, when we went to that showcase. Yeah. There was a lot of positives in that game, minus the first period, yeah, which was absolutely. a common theme in, in our beginning of the year. We went down 4 nothing in the first period, and then it ended up being an 8-4 game, right? So it, it was, a from the second period on, very good game. Um, but on the flip side, that was also our second weekend. I think we right. got a lot better since then. Right. And Absolutely. Use, use those situations as learning moments like, hey, we, these teams, yeah, they're good. But if we if we execute and we put the effort in, we can see success. Right? We can't just show up and expect to win the game. We have to at least put the effort in and execute if we want to give ourselves a chance. Sometimes teams might be better than us. Right. And they, they might get the win. But if we don't put the effort in and we don't. We're not mentally strong and not executing. We're not giving ourselves a chance to win. I mean, anybody in this league is beatable, but you just you have to be on top of your game, especially against these top teams. You can't you can't give them an inch or they'll start pulling away. Um, right. So just executing from the start, being ready to go, and you do that for a full sixty minutes. It's anybody's game, and I think with the team we have, if we execute and play our game for a full sixty minutes, we're a pretty tough team to beat, and we can beat anybody. I couldn't agree with you more, Coach. Same here. And one thing I wanted to ask about was when it, when your team does get down, you have, you know, like a rough weekend, like how you guys ended the first half of the year. How, as a coach, what are some techniques or some ways about how you can try to lift your team back up to, you know, get more success and get back on track? I think it, I mean, even in the past two weekends, that, that last game before break, we, we played a good hockey game, right? So did PAL. Yeah. Like yeah. they, they were, they're a good hockey team and they, they came out on the winning end, but that game could have went either way. Clean up a few things on our end and maybe capitalize on a few opportunities. That game goes the other way. So it's not it's not that we played a bad game. That, that's hockey. You're not going to win yeah. every game. And even when you play a good game, you you might still lose, right? Just finding those the positives in that game. And I, everybody in that room after the last two weekends it, on the games we lost, they knew we were better than them, right? It's not questioning, are we better than like, Everybody knows, like we we believe we can win, and we believe that when we execute and play our game, that we can win hockey games. And it's not, we knew that wasn't our best 
end of end of the first half. But again, learn from it, right? Don't try not to make the same mistakes over and over again. And again, it shows the importance of you have to show up and execute to give yourself a chance. You have to put in the effort to give yourself a chance. So in the long run, it was probably a good thing that we lost a couple of games before break. It shows us that, hey, we we're not invincible. We have to play. Um, so just on the flip side, don't harp on it. Move forward. Next game. Prepare for the next one. Continue to prepare and get better. I think I think a lot of great teams, you know, like they, they go through that adversity, right? They have to battle that adversity. I mean, look at the Eagles right now. I know you both are Eagles fans. <laughs> They're going through quite some adversity. Up? I'm sorry, but <laughs> sorry, man. Mason Rudolph's leading by Steelers to maybe an AFC championship right now. But uh, <laughs> no. But you know, you're talking about adversity. The Eagles is arguably one of the best teams in the NFC. They have to face some adversity. Same thing with the Cubs, right? We went on a 12-game win streak, the most wins in franchise history. Now you face some adversity, right? It's all about how you respond after that adversity that matters, not, you know, realizing that moment, okay, like, hey, we're in adversity. Kind of how do we respond to this and how do we kind of move forward in the upward direction? Absolutely. I mean, adversity adversity is an opportunity, right? You can yeah, that's a great way to use, that, that's use the adversity to to learn from it and get better. And when you face adversity, don't sit back and let adversity, like attack adversity head on, right? It's a challenge, go attack it, get over it. If we sit back and kind of let that adversity take control, it's gonna win, but you gotta attack that, get over it and learn from it. I mean, every everything's going well when teams are winning, right? It, you learn a lot more when things are tough and you're facing that adversity than you do when you're winning and everything seems to be going right. Cause then again, going back to what I said before, it's tough to reflect on on wins of how we can get better because things seem to be going well, even though there are areas that we can, we can do better. But when you're facing adversity, there's, you have no choice. You can either hide from it or you can look at the ourselves in the mirror and say, how can we fix this, attack it, overcome it and learn from it. And then next time we face it, it's even easier because we've been there before. We just bond together and execute our game plan and good things happen. You know, I was going to ask you too, coach, do you think the bond coming out of the break, is a lot stronger than when the season started, kind of coming together, kind of gelling, and kind of, you know, you have players coming back from injury, right? So I'm sure that's a boost to the guys as well. Kind of take us in the locker room right now. What is the buzz kind of coming off the break? I think after any break, guys are just excited to be back. You're you're away from the team for a long time, and especially the group we have, they're a close, close-knit group. So when you're away from your buddies, you're, you're – family for for that long you want to get back and you want to be back in that room with the guys and everybody's excited to be back at the rink and, and putting the work boots on um, but obviously from the beginning of the year we had guys that didn't know each other from different countries and throughout the season they build that relationship and that bond they're excited to get back they want to be back in the rink and in the locker room and on the ice and working out together again and breaks are always good in that sense that guys miss it and they want to be back and they're eager to be back absolutely and one of uh important question I have for you and I can see you still have it right now but with the success you had in the first half with the muzzy is that gonna stay for the for the rest of the season I don't think I have another choice you don't have another choice <laughs> you can't shave now you can't shave now can't I think go it's back just becoming my thing I, just, I like it I, I, I dig it, it how is. does the how does the wife feel about it she actually doesn't mind it. She was a she was a big supporter of it from the start. So I mean, <laughs> she's a keeper. Well, some of your players followed you too. Some of the other guys have. So I remember talking about it with Marco about it because he had he had one when we oh, had him on the podcast. Awesome. Yeah, he had a really good one. He said a bunch of you guys, a uh, bunch of them have have one as well. So I guess you started a trend a little bit for your own club. I don't know. I, I may have, but then they all went home for break and their moms made them shave. So I, <laughs> I was going to, oh. I was going to ask any of them come back with like shaved muzzies or anything. Oh, that McKetty came back like clean shaven. He looks like 12 years younger, but oh, no. yeah. <laughs> they'll come back. Maybe. That's awesome. I wanted to touch on one quick thing here before we head out. Uh, speaking of, you know, improving and everything, I just want to talk about piggybacking from uh, the Coach Carey episode from last week with M.A. From last year to this year, every single one of his numbers has gotten better. He's he's still one win away from 10 uh, wins. He almost had it to end of the year. But to speak on, you know, him coming back and being one of those leaders and how he had personally has shown that you can improve at this level. I think that's one of our goals every year, even if it's a player who is returning or not. We want improvement. We want development in our players year after year. If they're coming back, we obviously don't. You're, 
the mindset is we're never good enough, right? There's always ways we can be better as a team and individually. So we want our players to continue to improve. And MA is a, a good example of that. I mean, he's, he's playing the last two weekends was, was awesome. Um, just goes to show, just keep putting in the work and, and good things will happen. It's not always overnight. It's not always in a matter of a month or even a season, but coming back, we want guys to improve. And I mean, that's credit to everybody on the staff, Patty, coach Brady, the train, like everybody's in this together to help these players improve. Nobody's here just along for the ride. We all want the same thing. We share a common goal. Um, so that's just goes out to everybody else helping with this. It's not, obviously it's not just me. We got Brady putting in a lot of work and, and behind the scenes. We got Patty coming in, working with the goalies and just everybody, team doctors, Courtney, team trainers, like everybody who's has their hands on this team is part of this success and getting these players better. And if we can, if everybody's getting better, that means the team's getting better and we're continuing to go in the right direction. You know, and you talked a little bit, Clay, earlier, and Brendan talked about it too, about his performance in the PAL Junior Islander series right before the break happened. He played fantastic in that last game right before the holiday break. He probably had well over what, Coach? 40-some shots at him? Yeah, yeah, in both games, probably. Again, in going, both games. So, up <laughs> yeah. yeah, so, yeah, that's that's quite the workload for him, and he played stellar in that second game. I mean, like they really had to try and get two-on-one opportunities to get anything on that kid, and he his lateral movement has, you know, I, I know I've been with the team for like one full year, but from the time I saw him last year to this year, he's, he's looking stellar. Again, it's just an example of a, a player who wants it, right? He knows where he wants to end up and he, he has that end goal in mind, but he's not overlooking where he's at now. And I mean, you could put any of our goalies in net and we have a confident team in front of you. And when you have goalies in net who you are confident will save the puck and keep you in the game, that elevates the entire team. And it doesn't matter if it's, what goalie we're putting in net, we all know that they're going to make the saves they need to. Probably going to make some saves they shouldn't to keep us in it, and that's just that's just a big boost on the players playing in front of that goalie. And yeah, we starting it starts from the net, and if our goalies are playing well, which they have all year, it's just it gives a lot of confidence moving forward. And speaking of goalies, it looks like Westy's recovering very very well at a very good rate. Yeah, there's a it's it's awesome to hear. We didn't know how long that would be, but. It's awesome. He might be able to see a game in by the end of the year, which is yeah. I think he'll be to awesome. get on skates here in maybe a week or a few weeks. I forget the exact timeline, but that'd be very cool to see him get a game in by the end of the year. Yeah, that'd absolutely. be that'd be awesome to see a great a great way for him to end his season and get be able to yeah. come back. But still, stellar performances from the goaltending all around. Johnny stepping up as well, Johnny, having yeah. to fill in for. West as a younger guy, and he's doing a really good job as well. And with that, Coach, we'll end on that. Thank you very much for joining us. Happy New Year to you. Happy New Year, Josh. Haven't said that to you yet. Yes, thank and you. <laughs> Happy New Year to all of our fans watching at home. And thank you, Coach, for joining us on this edition of The Roar. I'm Clay Thomas alongside Joshua Gerhardt. Find us on YouTube at Hershey Cubs The Roar, as well as at Hershey Cubs on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, or Hershey Cubs on Facebook. Hit that like button, subscribe, and follow us on all accounts, and we'll see you at the Hershey Arena on Saturday. Fear the Roar.